Welcome to the Startup Sack Podcast, uh, interviews with Sacramento startup founders and innovators. Today I am at Impact VC again, and with me I have Kyle Kaneshiro, um, who uh, he's got a kind of a different background than from those we often do, not a startup founder, but involved in the ecosystem here. So Kyle, welcome. Let's have you start off introducing your background, uh, where you spent the last 30 years, and where you're at now. All right, perfect, Jeff. First of all, thank you for uh, inviting me. Uh, so, as Jeff said, my name is Kyle Kanishiro. Um I've had interesting background in terms of how I ended up at the Small Business Development Center. And the Small Business Development Center is a nationwide nonprofit funded by the federal government, funded by the SBA, and we are here to help the economic, poly- uh, economic development across the U.S., but specifically in the capital region of Sacramento. And uh, we specifically focus on people that are interested in starting a business, and we help them with a lot of advice, or people that are looking to improve their small business. Um, as Jeff mentioned, uh, so my 30 year background, my personal journey, how I got here. Uh, moved to Sacramento back in late 80s um, when the Sacramento Kings weren't, weren't that great. <laughs> uh, but uh, I um, spent close to 30 years at Intel Corporation. So all in 100% in business, I worked a lot with the engineering teams. Um, my last role was a director of strategic planning for the client group and we drove about $48 billion worth of revenue for Intel, for our specific group. Um, I just recently retired, and one of the benefits of working for Intel and being a retired person from Intel is that uh, I'm able to work at a nonprofit for a very small, uh, small time, uh, one year, and Intel provides a little bit of a kicker with a with a grant specific to retired Intel employees that are looking to uh, give back to the community. And that's how I ended up at the Small Business Development Center. While at Intel, at a director level, I love coaching and mentoring employees. I managed a bunch of employees as well. And that's something that just really resonated with me. And the Small Business Development Center allows me to do that uh, in a more nonprofit, give back to the community perspective. So for those who aren't very familiar with SBDC, and I suspect that's a lot of people out there, can you talk a little bit about what the programs are at SBDC? that can specifically help um, startup founders. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And so SBDC, I think it's one of the most kept, uh, well-kept secrets in the nation. I was not aware that the Small Business Development Center existed. So what we do is uh, we have a bunch of workshops that we offer for free. Uh, and it's usually in the middle of the day, and that's, that's sometimes challenging for startups and, and business owners to actually take, take away some time. Uh, but we do workshops that are primarily geared to um, understanding how you start a business, right? Um, we help with business plans. We help with access to capital. Um, and we do that through workshops. One of the main things that we offer is one-on-one advice to small business owners or uh, entrepreneurs, startup uh, economy. Uh, so we really offer, we have 20 advisors, and 20 advisors are very, we have some people with government expertise, uh, one or two people in the high-tech world, you know, leveraging my background with Intel, very, very much focused on um, high tech security. We have people in the restaurant business. We have a lot of small business owners themselves that are all relatively uh, very experienced, 20 to 30 years. Um, we also have, for example, one of our marketing experts is a professor at Sacramento State University. And so, as you as as startup owners come to see the SBDC, it's free of charge. We meet with the clients, and if they need help with developing business plans, if they need help with pitch decks to venture capitalists, or if they need to get working capital, we have a lot of relationships with uh, banks and financial institutions that we can actually broker and help you meet the requirements of an SBA-funded loan. So what are some of the success stories? What's some of the data that, um, I know you guys have helped a lot of startups. Um, what are some of the numbers you can help to, sh- to show the value that you're giving to the community? Because it's, it's significant. It is significant. So one of the, one of the benefits and uh, challenges of, of being funded by the federal government is that we do track our customers and clients. So we ask our clients to come in and as they onboard to the program, there's a, a, a series of questions and a registration process. So through that registration process, we're able to keep very specific tabs on our clients. And so, for example, the beginning of January 17, uh, we have helped 24 to close to 25 businesses uh, launch uh, in the last eight months. Just in the Sacramento region? Just in the capital region. Mm -hmm. So we support uh, eight counties within the capital region, Sacramento County being the largest. We extend to Yolo, 
We also service uh, Placer as well as um, El Dorado County. And we go all the way up to Yuba Sutter and Lake County support as well. So we've helped 25 people start their businesses. We've infused uh, close to $13 million in the capital region, uh, primarily through SBA backed loans, line of credit and personal investments. Uh, that's the small business owners' personal investments. And to qualify for a bank loan, uh, most banks require business owners to put down 5, 10%. So that's the 13 billion that we capture. Uh, and we've also keep track of jobs created and jobs retained. And since the beginning of the year, we are credited to about 160 jobs retained or jobs created. So how do, uh, give me maybe a walk through the process of how a startup founder say, we're here at One Million Cups, um, a couple founders presented. What's the typical process or use case where a startup founder might come into you and, and how might you, how might, what, what would they expect to come in and work with the SBDC? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a really good question. And so um, a lot of founders uh, or a lot of startup uh, people that are looking to start a business or, or a tech business or whatever business they're looking at, um, some of them don't really understand a business plan. And so we help them through the business plan. You know, one of the first things we have a discussion on is what's your business strategy, what's your end game, what do you want to do? And that helps us provide some advice on legal entity. So are you a sole proprietor? Do you want to be a limited uh, LLC? Do you want to be um, you know, a California benefit company? All right. And so there's pros and cons in um, all those directions um, from a legal entity perspective. So we kind of help walk them through the pros and cons uh, depending upon what each, each small business owner wants, wants to do. Um, getting access to capital. A lot of people come in at a million cups of coffee and they think venture capitalists. They see Shark Tank and they say that's the only way for me to get cap uh, capital. Um, that is a one way to get capital, not the only way. There are a lot of other ways. Instead of giving up a uh, stake of your company, you can go off and drive personal loans, debt loans, um, Kickstarter loans. There's a lot of alternative forms of financing that we can work with you, develop the business plan, develop financial models, actually provide points of contacts to different financial institutions to help you and help the business owner get working capital to be successful. And that is in addition to you know, working with companies like Impact VC on, on, on an equity stake in your company. But so, there are a lot of other options other than just going, giving up. Uh, equity stake in your company. Before I forget, um, how would people? How do people find SBDC? Is uh, a website? Um, how can we find? How can somebody listening to this go and, and and contact you and find you? Yeah. So we've been in existence for a long time. We're part of the Sacramento Metro Chamber. Uh, we have our specific website, Capital Region SBDC .org. Um, You can look at that website. You can see our list of twenty advisors. We have advisor profiles. Um, there's a request access and that leads to the database that I've talked about. So it takes about six minutes to fill out some of the information that we require. And then from there, uh, our admin will get in contact with you, ask a couple of questions, determine where you're at with your business and either set you up with the right advisor or recommend taking one or two of our workshops to kind of get you moving in the right direction. And then, you know, the next step would be working with your advisor. So, uh, word of mouth is primarily what we do. We work with other sister uh, nonprofits that are funded by the SBA. We work with uh, Startup Zach very closely to advertise and market our services. And our services are prepaid, right? which is a nice way of saying. By whom? They are free. They are prepaid by our tax dollars, there as you I go. mentioned. The SBA is funding us, so the service is provided uh, through your tax dollars. Awesome. So you have prepaid for our services. So you can get us through order mouth or capital region SBDC. So you've been doing this for uh, I think nine or ten months coming up. Twelve year. months. Twelve months now. 12 months. So it has been twelve months. What um, in that twelve months you've probably talked to a lot of founders, entrepreneurs out there. What are some of the um, key um, things that you find efficient or that you've had to help or what's the common trait that people need from SBDC or, or in general? Right. Uh, so I think in general there's a. Uh, um, uh, lack of mentorship. All right. I'm seeing a lot of uh, startups coming through a million cups of coffee and looking for some direction, looking for some input. There's a whole wealth of information um, out there and available. And so we are working, and Jeff Startup Sack is involved with the uh, 
a resource hub that we hope to release via IO Labs and our state funded iHub or state uh, supported iHub initiative. So we're trying to provide that resource to uh, proprietors and people looking at small business and, and innovators. Um, the other thing people come to is just overall business plans. They, they may be really good at, at a software idea, a SaaS model, software as a service model, uh, but they don't really understand sales and marketing or they get that confused so they, they, they don't fully understand how to actually sell and market and, and get uh, customers for their, for their product or for their service. Um, some of these entrepreneurs are engineers, so they're afraid to ask for dollars, right? They don't have a lot of business training, so that's something that we can help provide, get some confidence. Um, at the end of the day, you're in business, so you want to get that revenue generated. And then the third thing that I would, uh, I would say, uh, especially through a million cups, um, a lot of people are surprised that venture capitalists is not the only way to fund your company. As a matter of fact, less than 1% of small businesses actually are funded by venture capitalists. And so there are a lot of other businesses that are funded through the traditional loans, debt loans, or some creative ways to finance your business. So um, any big standout uh, wins that you've seen over the last year that you've been in here? Any, any startups out there that you just scored a major victory in your tenure here so far? Uh, so we have a couple. I actually worked with um, the Art Institute and worked with the uh, one of the professors there in the film uh, film department. So I actually worked with uh, some of the film students to actually do uh, customer testimonials. So I'll talk about three of them. Uh, Glue Factory is a partnership that we have with Gordon Fowler. Uh, he owns his own business, uh, Threefold Communications, started a incubation site in Roseville. Uh, called the Glue Factory, and so what he does is he offers advice. He he gets in 12 to 15 entrepreneurs in his program, and he focuses for 12 months on how to make their businesses more successful. Um, part of that program involves um, our advisors being accessible to his 12 or 15 clients. So we do have a video, uh, Barobo Robotics over in Davis. Uh, start out from UC Davis, part of their research. They do educational software and the way they communicate and, and reach out to K through seniors, K through 12 um, students, is by robotics, but they really teach software. So Baroba is another test case where they went to five or six different banks, cannot get a $100,000 loan. Um, uh, we worked with them in terms of getting their business plan, getting their paperwork, meeting their requirements, we were able to get their uh, loan that they needed to continue success. And then I'm going to give uh, another, Broadway Coffee is another uh, company that we are working with. Uh, we actually provided them a lot of business advice. One of our senior advisors worked with them to actually launch a coffee shop uh, in the Broadway Oak Park area. And they've been in existence for two plus years. So also in, the, in your last year here of tenure, um, what kind of changes or evolution, growth, progress have you seen or, or not seen? that you expected to see in the Sacramento entrepreneurship ecosystem in general? Ah, oh, that's a good question. I think the environment is seems to be a little bit different. Um, and what I mean by that, just the, the local community from city government to the Sac City government to uh, startups like Startup Grind and Startup Sacramento and the advent of the co-working spaces actually moving up to actually become uh, incubate, incubators and accelerators, so a lot more focus. Uh, I just read a statistic, I think there are 20 uh, incubation focused uh, events and companies, uh, co-working spaces plus incubation sites uh, in the Sacramento region. So 19 to 20 today, um, from two years ago, I would say it would be less than half that number. So an explosion of co-working spaces and that co-working spaces they're moving towards more um, incubation and acceleration. I've also noticed that uh, a lot of the city officials, a lot, a lot of um, people aren't familiar with the incubation, acceleration, and co-working spaces. And so the, that term is used, those terms are used interchangeably. And so, you know, I think it helps uh, us in the entrepreneur community to help educate people that there are differences between co-working spaces, incubation, as well as acceleration. And I think the more we can educate people, um, the, the more successful this region will be. Let's do that now. Tell people the difference. 
Yeah, so co-working spaces, a lot of co-working spaces that are available. Typically, um, it's a membership, so you can join a co-working spaces. Um, they provide um, local office spaces, so all your network setting is up. Uh, it's, a, it's, an, it's a place that you can go and do your business of work at a shared desk. Uh, the benefit of that is you're actually working with a lot of entrepreneurs and you can actually associate with, with uh, different people in the co-working space. And there's a lot of co-working spaces available. The next level is the incubation. So incubation takes uh, a couple of different forms, but they're usually programs where small businesses apply for, you get accepted. Um, it could be as simple as uh, the glue factory where they offer a lot of advice and support and coaching and mentoring and contacts within that incubation. The other extreme is uh, a three-month class where after the class you graduate and you're given a certain amount of dollars to actually help um, your business grow anywhere from three to three to six month coursework. Um, and then acceleration is just a um, it's just an incubation period, but you accelerate that process where you get companies into the into their business selling products and services as fast as possible. And that's usually a very intensive um, six-week, three-month uh, program where individuals learn uh, the basics of business, but also at the end, uh, there's typically uh, some dollars associated with that graduation to help you start your business and get into your business as quickly as possible. So Great. those are the three different. Great summary. So uh, wrapping things up, um, any last um, words of advice or tips or shout outs to anybody in the community? What would you like to share with, what would you like startup founders to know uh, before we leave? Yeah, um, so I think Jeff and Laura have done a great job with Startup SAC. Thank uh, you. Especially with the newsletter, right? That's one of the things that I learned coming in. Uh, they have a wealth of centralization uh, and, and information, a lot of activities that are going on. A simple piece of advice is there's a lot of people out there uh, there are a lot of services out there, and my advice is to talk to as many people as you can um, because everyone's going to give you a little different perspective on how to start your business, how to improve your business, what you should do, what you shouldn't do. And I think the more people that you talk to, the different perspectives you get, the more informed you are going to make as a small business entrepreneur. Great. Good advice. All right. Thank you, Kyle, for your time, and uh, wish you the best of luck in SBDC and wherever else you go in the future. Great. Thanks, Jeff. Right. Happy to be here. Awesome.